Uh, Mr. Corbett, I could listen to you all night, but I know the members want to ask questions, so we're going to let them do that. Um, Seven-minute round, Mr. Lukiski, you're starting. Thank you very much, and thank you, uh, Mr. Corbett, for being a good to see you again. I, we'd seen you before this committee. Uh, I, like uh, my colleague, Mr. Reed, have been on this committee for, it seems, an eternity, uh, but uh, only, I guess, for the last eight years. I do have a question about one of your, your former uh, investigations. Now, may I ask, sir, since this investigation I'm going to be referring to has been completed, are you able to talk about completed investigations? I'd, I'd, I'd rather not reconducting the investigation or a prosecution, mind you, but... Uh... Well, it, there is no charges laid here, but I'm just curious. Mm. I mean, it's always been something I've been extremely curious about. Now that I have the opportunity to be with you in the same room, I'd just like to get some, <laughs> some information to satisfy my curiosity. It refers back, to, I hope you can remember, a case revolving um, a former Conservative member of Parliament by the name of Jeremy Harrison. And in the 2006 election, Jeremy Harrison was running in the uh, far north... Uh, Saskatchewan, well, it's a Meadow Lake, I think, uh, riding provincially, but it was the Senti Missinippi riding federally. Missinippi, yeah. Right. Uh, now, at the time, during that federal election, of course, Jerry was, Jeremy was the incumbent, and we were listening to the poll results come in, and at the end of the evening, by the time I went to bed, the media had declared Jeremy the winner, because he was up by a few hundred or perhaps even several hundred votes. His main opponent was a Liberal candidate by the name of Gary Morasti. Uh, Gary was a fairly well-known First Nations uh, individual, former chief of one of the bands up in the northern Saskatchewan area. Well, what happened, there was only one poll left to report. Jeremy was up by, as I say, a number of votes, a few hundred votes, declared the winner. I went to bed thinking that uh, he was re-elected. I woke up in the morning and all of a sudden I find out that Gary Morasti had won. The circumstances were such that the last poll, that last poll to report from a very northern riding on a First Nation Reserve came in three and a half hours late after they had obviously known all of the vote count up until that point in time and where the ballots were counted three and a half hours later uh, they found an amazing thing uh, that number one over 100 percent of the eligible voters in that First Nation Reserve voted. I think it was about 103 to 105 percent voter turnout and every single ballot cast was in favor of Mr. Morasti. Of course, Mr. Harrison thought this was highly unusual, as do I still to this day. I think most reasonable Canadians would think there was something fishy going on there. Uh, probably if you were to be uh, making a haphazard guess as to if there was voter fraud, perhaps someone wanted Mr. Morassi to win, waited to find out what they needed to win in terms of votes, stuffed the ballot box, submitted it, and ergo, uh, presto changeo, Mr. Morassi wins. You conducted, at least your office, I believe, conducted that investigation, and the report that we got back, I think it was from the chief electoral officer, uh, Mr. Corbett, it might have been from you, but I think it was the Elections Canada reported back saying, uh, we found no evidence of wrongdoing, and in fact, uh, we thought that uh, this was, in effect, almost a good thing, because we are trying to encourage First Nations participation in elections, so having 103% turnout uh, is a good thing. Why is there more than 100 percent? Well, we really couldn't enumerate. We didn't know how many people actually lived on the reserve. So to say there was 103 percent turnout is perhaps not accurate. And then to the point that every single ballot cast was in favor of the Liberal candidate, well, again, we didn't find anything unusual there, at least nothing to warrant recommending to the DPP a prosecution um, or uh, a court case take place because Mr. Rasti was a well-known First Nations chief, former chief, so therefore it's quite common, it's quite possible that 100 percent of the people casting ballots voted for him. I just wanted to know, I didn't understand there was much of an investigation there. It, it's on the surface would appear to me, and I think most, as I say, reasonable Canadians, that something fishy happened. Can you recall that investigation, sir, and can you shed any light just to satisfy my curiosity that's been bothering me for the last number of years? We did put out a uh, press release. I remember that. I have it in my hand here. I'm asking you, sir, as maybe well, a little the insight. press release is better than my memory. When you talk about more than on the voters list voted, that was in fact the case. The voters list was vastly incomplete with regard to the eligible possible voters in that community. Um, I, I recall um, the uh, band people being asked uh, why there was such a unanimous uh, vote for one person and uh, the band people's response to that, as I recall it, was, well, 
we told people that they'd get a better deal from the liberals than the conservatives if they voted liberal, and that's what happened. Uh, I don't know that that's against the law. Uh, to uh, call a band meeting and suggest to people how, suggest to people how they should vote and which way is in their best interests. Do I know why the delay? Why the, the no? Last... I don't remember the delay part. Yeah, it was three over three and a half part. hours. Yeah. But there were numerous people vouched for in that election who were not on the list. Really? People, people in, that, in, that, in that riding, they had no municipal addresses. Right. They had post office boxes in the next riding, but they lived there. The people running the polls knew everybody in town. They could have vouched for, vouched for everybody. People don't have driver's licenses with, with uh, addresses on them. It was, it was an interesting investigation to review because... I didn't know these places existed, frankly, right. until I read that. That did, uh, did you raise, in, in your investigation? Did you raise any possibility of voter fraud? Did you did you consider that as an option? Well, what kind of voter fraud would you be stuffing the ballot box? No, we didn't find that. We didn't find that. I know you didn't find it. What we found is a lot of bungling and and records that weren't uh, made out properly, if you will, administrative problems. With but nothing, people. nothing that. Uh, in your investigation would cause you to recommend that perhaps uh, the vote should be overturned or perhaps a no. new election no. should take place? No. No. One thing that surprised me though was that the band offered a prize for voters. To get the vote out, there was a, going to be a raffle with a television set. And I thought, well there's something there. You can't, you know, raffle, bribe people to vote. And when we interviewed the band people, the band people said, well, you can't get anybody out to do anything around here without a raffle and a prize. It's the way we do things. You want a meeting, you have a raffle and a prize, you get them to your so, meeting. So, so, so let me get this straight. So, so the band people offered a big screen TV as a prize and encouraged people to vote for one candidate over the no, other. No, they didn't encourage people oh, to or vote. Or said that they would well, probably get a better well, deal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that to me, it's so a bit of so, encouragement. So how do you get? I'm not sure. How, 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 how do you get? So how do you get the names in the bucket for the draw? Okay. Well, the band office is here, and the voting's going there. And you sit in the window with the band list, and you watch them as they go in. You circle their names. You cut them out. You stick them in a hat, and you draw a name. And Mrs. So and So won the television set and refused to speak to us. You're there in your opinion. Uh, Mr. Lukiski, your time is up and I have no TVs for you.